Coach Rob. Good morning, Rob. How are you? Doing just fine. A, uh, a one and one week in the five weeks of the regular season for your guys. Uh, the win over Towson on, on Wednesday night, and then uh, I lost up at Hofstra on Saturday. Talk about the two games a little bit. Well, you know, I thought that uh, you know, guys hung tough. We hung tough against uh, Towson, and, uh, you know, I, I got an opportunity to hear the tail end of uh, Pat's call, and, you know, I, I, I would just say that, you know, that going into that game was a, a lot of anxiety just because of they – you know, I, I give him and the kids a lot of credit. You know, when when you get to uh, the amount of losses that they have, you expect the team to quit and a team to not be competitive. And they are totally at the other end of the spectrum in terms of playing, not playing hard and not uh, quitting. They, they they've done a a, a unbelievable job. Uh, so and, and they had us down. We were down 11 with uh, 15 minutes to go in the game. And I was just proud of our guys because they hung tough. They really uh, stayed with it and hung tough, and we were able to make some shots uh, toward the end of the game and, and toward the end of the uh, the middle to the end of the second half, and that allowed us to get a little bit of a cushion. But uh, you know, I, I, after the game, I gave a lot of credit to uh, Towson, uh, Pat, and his kids for just the way that they uh, stayed with it through adversity and uh, you know have continued to battle. Uh, then we went up to uh, Hofstra, uh, and you know we ran into some offensive woes. We we just could not uh, score the basketball. I think we we might have shot thirty twenty some percent in the first half, and you know we were right there. We we were down uh, seven at half. Then once the uh, second half started, I believe we got it to within one. Uh, had a couple of chances, but we just couldn't score the basketball. So we, we really uh, were offensively challenged in that that game against Hofstra. And but again, you know, a lot of credit goes to Hofstra. Uh, you know, I thought they played well. I thought uh, Charles Jenkins was uh, played well, and I thought those guys did a good job. And it was a wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. It being senior night, and um, you know, the place was sold out. So. It was a good atmosphere to play in, and uh, they played well and beat us. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, we touched on Juwan Carter a little bit last week, but uh, he finishes the regular season with four straight 20-point uh, games, and it's really seemed to catch fire here over the last month of the season. Talk about his, his effort. Well, you know, we always talk about playing your best basketball going into the tournament, playing your best basketball at the end of the, you know, the middle of February going into March, and I think that's what uh, Juwan has done. He had a a tough stretch to start the season, then picked it up, then had another tough stretch in the middle of the season and has picked it up again uh, here of late. And hopefully, you know, what you want them to do is be able to uh, carry that going into the tournament. And uh, I think he, along with, uh, you know, Devon Sadler, has really picked up their games uh, here in the last couple of weeks. And, you know, we're going to need special efforts from them uh, on Friday evening. A question for you in queue from Brian Mullet, the Wilmington Star News. Go ahead, Brian. Monte. Uh, I have a, a question about uh, the league's offense. You know, the CAA always had a great reputation as being a, a kind of a defensive-oriented league and had teams that, that ranked up among the national leaders. Um, this year, uh, in the Ken Pomeroy uh, Tempo Free ratings, there's six teams in the top 90 in offensive efficiency. Is that a direct, which has never happened before, is that a direct reflection just of uh, teams having better players? Is it that simple? Well, I'll tell you what, it surely doesn't hurt. You know, uh, I think the level of player in this league, uh, even in my short time in the league, has raised significantly in terms of uh, offensive capabilities. And, you know, you start with that. Uh, you know, you can be, you know, there's an old old saying that says, if you want to be a good coach, you better get good players. And, and you know, I think the level of player in this league, you can devise a whole lot of things, but, Bottom line is the kids, the players have to put the ball in the basket, and I think you're seeing uh, a lot of teams that have guys that can, you know, score the basketball. And I think, you know, I, I wouldn't consider ourselves one of those, uh, obviously one of those elite teams that can score the basketball. I think what has helped us is that, you know, defensively we've been able to 
uh, controls some of those teams, and uh, that that's enabled us to win and also compete with the uh, elite teams in the league because of our defense. And uh, but but I, I would say that you know, like if you take George Mason for instance. Uh, they're one of the best offensive teams in the league, but they're also one of the best defensive teams in the league. And I think when you have that type of balance going for you, uh, it really bodes well for you. And I, I think, you know, it's no secret, it's no uh, coincidence. Why they're on a 15-game winning streak and probably one of the hottest teams uh, in the country, let alone our league, uh, is because of that balance that they have. So, no, I, I think it's, it's uh, to answer your question, uh, I think it's because of the talent level has increased in this league. Uh, so you're going to be you're going to be dealing with better offensive players, and uh, you know I, I think that's uh, safe to say. Thanks. Next question for you, Monte from Paul Woody at Richmond Times Dispatch. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, good morning, Coach. I uh, hope you're doing well. I'm uh, doing well. How are you, Paul? I'm getting by, and I'm not as young as I used to be, so we could talk for hours on that, but I won't bore everybody on the call. Well, Paul, just, be, just know and feel comfortable that none of us are as young as we used to be, so <laughs> you're in the majority. Uh, well, finally. So, uh, I'm curious, we're sitting here in Richmond, you've got uh, Josh Brinkley, who I believe is out with an injury, but was playing well before he got hurt, and I think you've got J3 coming up next year from Highland Springs. Have you, have you got a pipeline going from Delaware to Richmond, and what's enabling you to recruit so well in this area? Well, you say J3. Now, well, there's one J3 who was a legend at Virginia State. He's the dad. The other J3 is probably one of the top defensive players at Dell State. So we're getting Jarvis. We're getting the other one. Okay. Uh, but... Um, is it a pipeline? <laughs> I don't necessarily know it's a pipeline. I'll tell you what it is, and I think this is the biggest thing. This is really a Virginia-based league when you talk about the teams that have been in the league longer than anybody else. And I think that uh, players, especially in Virginia and North Carolina area, I really identify with the league and the success that the league has had. And that has enabled us to, when we go down to recruit and we say CAA, they may not know Delaware, but they know CAA. And I think that is an instant uh, familiarity with, um, with the league. So I think that has helped us uh, tremendously. And, you know, we were able to get some uh, Virginia players, and we were able to go back down and get some more Virginia players uh, this year. And hopefully we'll be able to uh, continue to go back down there. I think uh, – the players that we've had from Virginia have been really, really successful. You mentioned Josh Brinkley. Uh, Josh was having a terrific season for us. Uh, then he had a stretch fracture in his foot and had to miss significant time uh, at the end of the season here. Uh, but Kelvin McNeil is another young man who, you know, from the Norfolk uh, area who, who's had success with us uh, and, and been a really big part of, you know, us turning our program around. So, you know, I don't know if it's a pipeline, Paul, but I hope it's, you know, something that we can continue to do. Thank you. Yeah. Next question for you, Monte, from Kevin Chesley at the News Journal. Go ahead, Kevin. Hey, Monte, how you doing? Hello, Kevin. How are you? Good, thanks. Um, Monte, uh, every 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 year teams go into uh, uh, March Madness, Nick, and they can be the team that you know that pulls off a couple surprises and and uh, um, you know has that has that dream tournament. You know, you guys have beaten ODU, you took VCU to the wire, a couple of the top teams in the conference. Um, is, is this one of those CAA tournaments where you guys can kind of go into it thinking, hey, you know, we have a good chance to be uh, that team? Well, I, no. And only because I say this, all that stuff is good, Kev, but it doesn't mean anything if we can't beat Northeastern. And, you know, our sole focus is on how can we possibly beat a team. It's very difficult to beat a team two times in one season. And it's extremely, extremely difficult to beat a team three times in the same season. So we, we're really, Kevin, I'm not trying to be a, 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 a smart aleck or anything, but we are really scratching, scratching and clawing here to find out how can we possibly beat Northeastern uh, three times? Because they're playing well. Their team is really playing well. When we played them uh, the second time, they had won five of seven uh, coming in. And, 
you know, so so this game has us uh, as nervous as as any game that you know we're going to play. And, and if we're fortunate enough to uh, get behind Northeastern, we you know I think our kids will play with a sense of confidence because uh, yes, we did beat. ODU here, and uh, at their place, we took them down to the wire where we were up one with a minute 25 to go, and uh, Kent Bazemore hit a huge, huge three-pointer against us. So, you know, I mean, as you go down the line, uh, I think, uh, you know, privately for 15 seconds you can think like that, but I think if you take your mind off of that, that game that's right there in front of you, that's when you have troubles, and I, and I think that's what the best teams do, not that we, you know, not – exactly putting ourselves in that category, but I think what the best teams do, they do an unbelievable job of focusing on the task at hand and nothing else. Because I think sometimes as a coach, uh, subconsciously, you, you, you let some of those things seep out. And if you're, you know, your mind is wandering, you're thinking about other things and not totally focused on what that task is at hand, it seeps into your players. And, and once you start doing that, that's when you start running into uh, that hard luck type of uh, story that happens. Hey, Monte, are you going to have Jamel Hagens uh, this weekend? I was surprised he didn't play up at Hofstra um, on, on, on Saturday. And also, uh, is, is, is Alfonso Dawson's suspension going to remain uh, in effect as well? Uh, well, Alfonso is up in the air. Uh, we're not sure about that. Jamel, it, and it's funny, I didn't know this, but Jamel played a minute, according to the announcers on television, uh, up at Hofstra. It was funny because his foot – was back here in Delaware along with his body up in the air trying to get an infection out of it. But they said that he played a minute in the first half. Uh, he's, uh, he, he had a procedure done to try to get this infection out of his toe calf on Friday. Uh, he texted us Saturday morning that uh, his foot felt a whole lot better. He's going to do some weight-bearing things today, and he's going to be clear – Provided the weight-bearing things go okay today, uh, he's going to be cleared to start practicing with us uh, again tomorrow. So, you know, we, we're hoping uh, all signs are pointing, Kev, to him being available for us on, on Friday evening. And, uh, you know, we're desperately hoping that uh, that does come to fruition because uh, we really, really need his presence in there offensively and, most importantly, defensively. If I could just throw one more in here, Monte. Could you, know, could you just kind of sum up the year uh, Devon, Devon Sadler has had for you guys, coming in, coming in as a as a freshman, and you know, and really kind of becoming your your key guy uh, in many ways uh, toward the end of the season. Wow, well, Kev, I, I, I would say that um, you know you always have expectations for these freshmen when they come in, and if you can get them to match maybe like 10, 15 percent of what you expect of them. Uh, you're doing well because of the difficult transition of being a senior in high school uh, to being a freshman in college. But I'll say this, you know, about Devon Sadler, he's uh, surpassed and uh, surpassed all expectations that I had for him. I had no idea that – I knew that he could be good, but I had no idea that he could be this good. Uh, his capacity for learning, his capacity for listening, and his capacity for being willing to work – and get better, even during the season, has just been outstanding. And he, he, here's a young man that was shooting about 21% from three uh, early in the year, and now he's up to uh, 38%, I believe. And, you know, you have to shoot a, a heck of a percentage to get from 21 to 38. But he's, uh, he just has a passion for playing the game and a desire to keep getting better. And uh, I can't say enough about the year that he's had and, I'm really, really excited about uh, you know what he can be for us in this tournament, starting on Friday, and what he can be for us uh, for the next three years as well. Thanks, Monte. Yeah, thank you, Kev. All right, Monte. Thanks as always for your time today and all season long, and uh, look forward to seeing you later this week at the Coliseum.